and they're off. Double Destiny needs a bit of persuading in the early stages to stay with the pack. Pinnacle first one to go. Here's Raman. The blue colours at the outside pushing forward. Tried and true. Sits just off them. About three parts of a length behind the pace. Rose of Bayou's in the white sleeves and the pink cap. Then comes twice to heaven. At their outside is Princess of Fire. The blue and white colours. Chronicles of Narnia is in the black and three quarters of the way back with Easy Living. Racing one from last and Double Destiny is the trailer. As they work their way to the corner of the track, it's Ramar in front by one length. Tried and true. Went ahead of Pinnacle to race in second and tight quarters here with Princess of Fire doing it deep at the outside then comes twice to heaven Orange Sleeves and Cap 5th place down the side of the course and no more than 4 off the leader. Rosa Bayou's just been squeezed along. Then came Easy Living. They followed by Chronicles of Narnia who gave away a few places and leaving Double Destiny at the back of the field. 400 metres left to run. Ramar stacked them up. Now goes for home. She's in front of the top of the straight of a tried and true in second. Then comes Pinnacle. Rosa Bayou's in the pink cap. Further back to Twice to Heaven. Chronicles of Narnia as Ramar continues to find with 150 left to run. Rosa Rosa Bayou is second, tried and true next. Ramar Rosa Bayou eating into the lead. Ramar Rosa Bayou, but Rosa Bayou got the better of Ramar. Chronicles of Narnia ran third, then came tried and true in fourth. And uh, they were uh, the finishing lot yet. So the winner races towards the left-hand side. White sleeves and pink cap. Rosa Bayou, the favourite, was being ridden along a long way out. Ramar went to the front, stacked them out, shot away at the top of the straight. I mentioned the Matthews, also Alan Glenn, for Creof, Mike DeCock and Robin Stradham. That's quite a partnership, but they'll just be undone by number six, Rosa Bayou's desire to win race number three today. What an absolute tussle down the line to the running of the first leg of the pick six, but it's that gallant mare, Rose of Bayou, who gets it right. I've got Bullet to my right here, standing, smiling for the win. He's Duncan McKenzie's head groom, and he's standing in for Deba here, who's going to be very happy about the 1,500 rand that he has gotten, courtesy of World Sports Betting. Bullet, well done, and thank you for joining me. Uh, lovely, lovely, this uh, 1,500 rand extra that the grooms get to smile about, and I can tell you, World Sports Betting, there's lots of smiling about the extra money. Mpumi Mjorka coming in to have a word about Rose of Bayou's win. And Mpumi, things didn't all go your way. I think she's done a fantastic job, a will to win, getting there on the line. Yes, definitely right. Uh, you know, from having such a good draw, um, that first uh, 200 meters, I thought I was in a perfect position until they eased the pace and I had to just ease with them as well. I fell back a little bit. Around the turn, I got squeezed. I touched the rail, but, uh, you know, it wasn't such a yeah. bad thing. And uh, also, turning for home, I saw Richard skipping. I thought, oh, God. <laughs> and he's good at that. He's good at that. <laughs> yeah, I saw him skipping. And, uh, I, you know, this filly actually gave me so much confidence because yeah. she just kept on lengthening her stride. And uh, Mr. McKenzie gave me such simple instructions. He said, you know what, boy, just ride her with your hand. Yeah. Ride her with a lot of confidence. She'll definitely give it to you. And I did exactly that. Only later, I pulled my stick out just to say, just yeah. touch the line, and <laughs> she did exactly that. Well, well done, because, you know, when things go wrong in a race, one of the worst things you can do is overreact or try and fix. Sometimes the best thing to do is just sit, assess the situation and, and wait, yes. and uh, you did a great job. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a split decision that yeah. we have to take, but sometimes, you know, you just got to take your time and, and, and let things happen on their own, because at the end of the day, you can't jump off and help them run. <laughs> you no. just have to, you know, work with what you have underneath you. And this filly is such an amazing filly. So I'm just hoping that she do it again. And uh, she's quite opinionated as well. I saw her on the way down. That is how she goes down. But nice to have her put that kind of <laughs> attitude into her run yes, late. Yes, yes, you know, she keeps you on your toes. She does. <laughs> for me, yeah. once again, congratulations. Well done. Thank you so much. I'd just like to thank Mr. McKenzie. You know, he's always very supportive wherever he can. And also to Mr. Cavender as well. Well done. I'm sure he's happy watching his horse I'm winning sure two is. in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. For me, well done. Thank you. There you go. I saw Chick Duncan is not going to step in to join me. No, unfortunately not, because I really 
really wanted him to have a chat and just say, I think he's done a fantastic job with this mare. You know, she's really come well as she's actually matured. Uh, now a five-year-old and uh, now noting up her sixth career victory. She is the most beautiful mare to look at. Big, strong, full of presence. And her will to win, well, you saw today, undeniable.